தள்ளப்பட்ட உன்னை தலைவனாக மாற்றுவார் he will promote the rejected quite often we fail to realize that the rejections are blessings in disguise narai nerathla paathina inda ulagathula irukra periya periya thalavargal la oru kaala kattathla avanga vaazhkaila ellalalum niragarikkapattu thallappattu reject panna aatkala dhaan ini kattar uruvaakikkar hallelujah so we quite often in our life there are people who you know, keep rejecting us based on our background based on our education based on our past based on our appearance based on our achievements nariya nerathla nammala reject panni konde irukranga ana no matter how much people reject us nobody can reject the calling that god has on our life nariya nerathla it's often our own people who reject us nam aatkal da nammala reject pannuvaanga but then whenever we are being rejected god's waiting and watching so that we could be promoted hallelujah adala innikku devu pulligala if you're listening to this i'm telling you if people have rejected you in some area of your life i want to tell you the lord is about to promote you endha edathla thalla pottingalo andha edathla kattar ungalai thalaivaraga maatruvar hallelujah see a god is a god who reverses everything i want to read this verse from isaiah 60 and verse 17 all right isaiah the book of isaiah is a mini bible all right isaiah also has about 66 chapters all right first 39 chapters it's all about punishment and judgment about israel on israel the second 27 chapters is about how god brings them back now in chapter 60 he talks about how god's going to bless israel and bring them back in one of the verses he talks about isaiah 60 17 he says i will exchange your bronze for gold your iron for silver your wood for bronze your stones for iron i will make peace your leader and righteousness your ruler look at this exchange you know the world talks about a different exchange you know you in the world today bring the old gold get the new gold being your old bike and car exchange offer bring the old bike and car get a new bike or a car but you have to pay the difference all right barter systems of equal value but then imagine nobody takes a bike for exchange and gives you a car but then look at how god talks about an exchange he says you bring in brass i will give you gold you bring in silver i'll bring you give you iron you bring in bronze i will give you wood he talks about a total you know unimaginable unrealistic exchange you children of god if god could exchange these goods you need to believe how much more he can exchange and reverse the situation which you're going through amen hallelujah bring in whatever you have and i can exchange whatever you have come in with weakness i will give you strength all right come in with sickness i can give you healing come in with nothing i can give you abundance he is the god who can reverse and exchange with nothing hallelujah now we talk about fairy tales cinderella Aladdin all of that but then dear children of god if you look at godly tales okay aladdin and the lamp i would probably say moses and the rod whenever there was a miracle which was supposed to happen moses would probably take out the rod and wipe it and suddenly it's not the ghost or the genie which appears it's the holy spirit who comes and does a miracle today you know what the world calls every unbelievable story imaginary story as fairy tales Dear children of God, but if you read the Bible, the Bible is full filled with so-called fairy tales, which are godly tales. And I want to tell you, our life will have such fairy, godly tales for others to talk about. Come on, say aloud, Amen. Why should we talk about somebody else's story? Let somebody talk about our story. All right? Now, look at this, dear children of God. But how will God be able to do this exchange? When does the exchange happen? James chapter one. Okay verse 2 3 4 I want to read this My brethren you all know this verse my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect complete and lack no good thing If you've never felt pain dear children of God how will you know that God's a healer if you've never gone through sickness how will you go know that God's a deliverer If you don't go through tough times how will you know God is a miracle worker if you don't see blockages how will you know that God is a God of breakthroughs and that's why God says boss I'm going to exchange all these problems I'm going to take the problems I'm going to take the sickness I'm going to take the pain and exchange miracles in your life hallelujah 
he's going to reverse now let me let me give you an example you guys have applied for jobs have you applied for jobs okay you have a resume a bio data all right and you know what i i was working in oracle as a hr manager and i was uh, for a few years i used to head recruitments so we used to sit for these interviews and mostly whenever there's a big drive in india they will call me from any location to make sure that i find out the guys who are fake they would have cleared all the technical rounds but when they come to me we'll be able to find out and uh, you know basic thing is you look at their objectives most of the time their objectives and career summary and the strengths you know they would have copied from somebody else right most of the time the objective they would not be able to explain because they would have copied from somebody else and somebody would say problem solving skills so you ask them what was the problem you encountered in your office no sir problem solving i have solved all the problems but what was the problem leadership skills the guy wouldn't have had a team in his life the leadership skills all right now dear children of god this morning if you have to tell somebody you have problem solving skills you should have undergone a problem you should have solved it and only then you can say boss i have problem solving skills Today, if you tell somebody, "Our God is a miracle-working God," you should have had a problem. You should have experienced a miracle, and only then you can tell others, "My God is a miracle-working God." All right. If not, those are only words. Those are only copied resumes. Here, a lot of Christians are using copied objectives, copied resumes, because you keep telling God, "Oh, you know what? Jesus is a healer. He can make the blind see. He can make the lame walk. Oh, Jesus is a God of breakthroughs." Now, have you experienced this personally? Right. If you're going to tell others, God's saying right now, you're going to have some problems, and I'm going to solve that for you, and then you're going to testify to people, I have a God with problem solving skills, and He is a specialist in solving any kind of problem. Amen. A louder amen. Before the exchange, a reversal happens. Now, before I go into today's story, I want you guys to read this particular verse from Isaiah and see how the Lord is. changing reversing israel situation is isaiah chapter 60 verse 14 the descendants of your tormentors okay basically look at them as tormentors why look at descendants your tormentors will come and bow before you all right your tormentors come on i i i i believe that you will have some names in your life right now you have some names and trying to put your faces to your mind my tormentors will come and bow before me those who despised you will kiss your feet come on isaiah is like those who despised you will kiss your feet come on better wash your feet keep it ready put some moisturizer all right keep it ready those who despised you will kiss your feet they will call you the city of the lord and the zion holy one of israel though you were once despised and hated with no one traveling through you i will make you beautiful forever a joy to all generations powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy every need as though you were a child nursing at the breast of a queen you will know at last that i the lord am your savior your redeemer the mighty one of israel i will exchange your bronze for gold silver for wood and your stones for iron i will make peace your leader righteousness your leader violence will disappear from your land desolation and destruction of war will end salvation will surround your city walls praise will be on your lips of all those who enter there this is what god's talking about israel because they're all in captivity right now and god saying boss i just like this verse where he says you know those who despised you will come and kiss your feet kings will bow before you but then even if they come and do we will not allow them the lord says reversal will happen before the exchange now why did i pick these verses because we're going into such a story today I thought the pastor who preached in the morning all right was going to preach also in the second service I thought I wouldn't have to prepare a sermon In fact today morning I got up and I I had something else to preach but the Lord took me here He said this morning this is what your church wants to hear Dear children of God God saying he's going to take some rejections in your life and make that a promotion Amen especially where you were put away the lord saying i'm going to make you a leader there i'm going to make you a capstone there hallelujah a capstone come on say capstone now let's get into the story this is the book of judges we're looking at this guy called jephtha all right and the story of jephtha actually you know it starts with uh, 
it it starts with the hurt because you know quite often the children are being hurt for all the mistakes which the parents have made okay the children are hurt because here they call him the son of a prostitute a lot of hurt because of the mistake which the parents made and that's what's happening in the bible as well quite often they talk about the talk bad about the children for the mistakes their parents have made and that's how this story also starts judges chapter 11 all right now jephtha of gilead was a great warrior come on how does it start jephtha of gilead was a great warrior and you're like wow but then they say he was son of gilead but his mother was a prostitute boss you could have left it there boss right you could have just said jephtha of the great warrior he was a son of gilead why should you call his mother a prostitute all right quite often dear children of god we go through this in tamil they say no vanja pugachi ani you heard about this all right they kind of you know try to praise you but it's all fake praises it's like jephtha was a great warrior and then like his mother's a prostitute this morning dear children of god i want to tell you that my first point for today is just three points i'm going to finish people can deny what you deserve but they cannot deny what he is about to deliver in your life people can deny what you deserve as in the blessings you deserve but they cannot deny what the lord is about to deliver i'll tell you why gilead's wife also had several sons but when these half brothers grew up they chased jephtha of the land and you know what they said you will not get any of our father's inheritance they said for you are the son of a prostitute jephtha is actually is their father's son all right they're calling him your prostitute son but then they also need to understand it's the same father quite often dear children of god we also do this we have the same father all right but then we deny the blessings which others the same the children who belong to the same father we deny the blessings they're like they're saying we want to put you away we don't want to give any of the father's inheritance you know what they're denying the father's inheritance to the son they're like this is belongs to the father but we will not give you this blessing dear children of god have you have you gone through a place and stage in life where you've been denied the blessings you're supposed to receive now this is for you this morning If you've been denied what you're supposed to receive, nobody can stop what the Lord is about to deliver in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. They could deny it, but they don't have the power to stop what God's going to deliver. All right. In fact, they said they denied and they said you're the son of prostitute. Dear son of God, let them use all kind of words today. Quite often, we are more hurt with people's words than their actions. right more than the actions it's the words which still linger in our minds we are hurt with what they've used come on i didn't do this imagine jephtha like he's like what mistake did i ever do boss what did i do i am a great warrior i've got talents i am skills i've got i'm a i'm a great warrior but still why do you call me son of a prostitute for the mistake somebody else have done and in fact you know what they denied and took all his inheritance because actually they were scared of jephtha Dear children of God, today people want to take away your blessings. They want to ill-treat you. They want to they want to use words against you. They want to make you feel you bad because they are actually scared about you. Amen. Amen. So what happened now? My mother-in-law passed away. So our entire team, lot of church members were there. So they were inside my inside our mother-in-law's house and. Uh, so there were certain people who went through all our wardrobe then they were looking at all our pictures our old pictures right the day lydia and i got married ria's first birthday they were going through all the pictures and i believe that one person one person on our team had looked at my old picture and said this pastor is very soft with hair he is very soft and very approachable and they children of god sometimes people probably they want to put you down because you're scared they're scared I mean, I told her in the ministry which we do, there are a lot of oppositions happening. You know, even in the new city, we went there. The plant church, which are already going to plant in Bombay, lot of oppositions. But then those oppositions remind me probably they're scared of us. Are people are people trying to put you down? You need to understand they're actually not powerful. They're scared of you. That's why every opportunity they're trying to put you down. Right? They're scared of you. 
they will they will try to find something wrong about you right if you go walk into a or walk into a family function they'll probably come to you and you know they might ask about something which has not happened in your life when are you going to get married boss you know that we're not still not married when are you going to have the child boss be bothered about your own child be bothered about your marriage the people who are still not married saying boss i am so happy not being married than to have a marriage like yours i'm just kidding but then that's how people want to put us down you know what they want to put us down because they're scared probably next time when they ask you you said hey i understand you're scared of me and that's why you're trying to put me i understand in fact that's what they did to jephtha they pushed him out because they were actually scared of him verse 3 So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And then it says soon he had a band of worthless rebels following him. What kind of rebels? Not even rebels. Worthless rebels. Say worthless rebels. My second point for today is spending time on worthless according to the world. actually makes you worthy for the lord to use all right quite often we think oh this is worthless people come and say why are you spending time on worthless stuff all right why are you spending time on worthless people worthe illa in tamil they say worthe illa but you know what these worthless people come to jephtha and jephtha becomes a leader for them amen you need to understand jephtha right now has run away from all his brothers he has nobody to support him but suddenly he has a group of worthless rebels if he had any of his relatives they would have said don't be spending time with this worthless rebels you know what jephtha would have done he would have probably you know brought all these worthless rebels spend time with them groom them train them right and everybody would have said you're spending time on something worthless they children have got quite often even parents tell me pastor you are spending time wasting time on my children my son will never change me i go we pray with all confidence and then the parents tell me you are wasting my time wasting your time on my son quite often people might think that we are wasting time on worthless stuff but actually i'll tell you you investing time on such things makes you worthy to be a leader says the lord amen hallelujah you're not spending time on worthless stuff about this time if you read the fourth verse it says about this time the ammonites began their war against israel now the sudden war when the ammonites attacked all the elders of gilead okay the people of gilead only sent jephtha away all the elders of gilead sent for jephtha they were asking for jephtha the elders said come and be our commander help us fight the ammonites Now what are they saying? Come and be our commander. Beginning of the verse, what does it say? You son of prostitute. Now how did this guy come to the state of being a commander? Because he spent time with these worthless guys who came to him, developed them. Now he's got a band and a team of worthless guys who are worthy to be used. Now God has made him a leader, and people are saying, "Why don't you be a commander?" They should have got initially. It might look like we are spending time on worthless people, worthless stuff. But whatever you've done will never go in vain. The Lord is making you worthy because you're spending time on some worthless stuff. There are people who talk to me say, "Pastors, all those years are worthless, gone without any worth." I spent time on worthless stuff. I spent time on worthless people. But you know what? Now that's what is actually making him a commander. Dear children of God, is there anything that you feel today that you're spending time on worthless? You know what? I spent so much time on this person, and he again backslided. You know what? I spent so much time praying for somebody, nothing has happened. All those times of prayer has gone without any worth. No, no, no! Don't ever have that thing in your mind. God is saying, everything in your life which the Lord has allowed will fit into His great plan. Amen. Everything you've gone through in life, all your failures, all you, all you think is a no. We leave alone worthless. People say, "I wasted time. I wasted time." 
in my career you know pastor the first 3 years i actually wasted pastor only the fourth year i got into something boss because of your first first 3 years only on the fourth year you got into something pastor 7 years of marriage pastor all those 7 years have gone for a waste only now eighth year we are starting to enjoy our life or only eighth year we are starting to have a child boss those seven years have actually prepared you for the eighth year you've not wasted it's not gone worthless at all the lord is saying i actually pruned you prepared you molded you to be worthy of the blessing that god's going to give you amen now third point the lord will make the same people who rejected you acknowledge your calling all right the same reject who rejected you will acknowledge your calling i'll tell you why so everybody is now coming to jephtha and saying boss you be the commander to us judges 11 verse 7 jephtha said to them but jephtha okay listen to this jephtha said to them aren't you the ones who hated me and drove me from my father's place Why do you come to me now when you are in trouble? And their reply was because we need you. Because we need you the elders replied. And they saying if you lead us in battle against the Ammonites we will make you the ruler over all the people of Gibeah who son of a prostitute. Imagine how much it would have broken Jephtha. In fact this guy is asking you were the ones who threw me out why are you coming now and these guys without having any shame without missing a beat because we need you have you experienced such people in life after speaking so much for us when they come back to us and and, and how they speak in front of us i knew the lord will do it for you i knew this is how it will become we and the most worst part is they say we've actually been praying for you to hear all those stories with no shame they will come and talk to you like this and they saying if you lead us we'll make you a leader now jephtha says my version says like this nlt version he said jephtha said to the elders let me get this straight if i come with you and if the lord gives me victory over the ammonites will you really make me the ruler of all the people he's like he has trust issues over these guys He's thinking, boss. If I come again, you might use me and again call me the son of prostitute and throw me away. But then this time they will not do because this guy's got a band of rebels as well. Now the people are saying, the Lord is our witness. Ami satyama, God promise. The Lord is our witness. The elders replied, we promise. Now listen to this. We promise to do whatever you say. Right? Whatever you say, and we will do it for you. So Jephtha went with the elders of Gilead and the people made him their ruler and commander of the army at Mizpah in the presence of the Lord Jephtha repeated and repeated what he said to the elders They should have got now the same people who threw him out he ran away now he comes back and God makes him the leader and the commander in fact he mispa he just announces and confirms the call upon his life this one about this morning i tell you people could have rejected you people could have thrown you people could have used all sorts of words and demean you belittle you put you to shame what worse could have somebody said no imagine somebody calling him son of prostitute right imagine that no that word you know this at least in english son of prostitute it is little decent Imagine they were using this word in their own local language. You in Tamil, imagine what word they would have said. Imagine in Hebrew, what word would have said. How much it would have broken Jephtha. Jephtha didn't speak back. But then there was a time where the Lord answered on behalf of Jephtha. They came back to them. They said, "Now, God, I want to tell you that whoever rejected you, they will come to you. The Lord will bring them." the lord will confirm your calling because jephtha was called to be a leader and nobody can steal that away probably temporarily momentarily they could have done that whatever has happened in your life is just for a moment but then god is here reversed and exchanged the roles and this is what isaiah said you know when we read in isaiah isaiah said 
your enemies will come and kiss your feet they will bow down before you call you back to where you were supposed to right this is going to happen do you believe this will happen if god could do it for jephthah it can do it for us as well amen he can do it for us and you know what i want to encourage you that nobody can deny your father's inheritance the 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 the, the worldly father's inheritance all those property people could deny but then whatever he's going to give you nobody can deny that nobody can deny that whenever i read the story of jephthah i still remember what happened to me because my father said everybody were hindus and in fact when my father passed away i was denied of all my father's inheritance and my mom also stood with me and she said you don't need a single pi or do penny of what your father had she said in fact she said it's all okay we don't want them I, we were denied we were taken away all of my father's inheritance because i was a child of god i was a christian everything was removed dear children of god i still believe that was the biggest blessing that god gave me because for me when i am denied of my father's inheritance in this world i know for sure my father's got greater inheritance not just there but also here amen hallelujah and jephtha becomes the king now the best part is hebrews chapter 11 talks about all the heroes of faith in which i'm not sure how many guys, how many of you guys have noticed in which it says how much more do i need to say hebrews chapter 11 verse 32 33 34 it says it took too long to recount the stories of faith he talks about stories of faith the stories of faith of gideon barak samson jephtha david and samuel right imagine from nowhere amidst the heroes of faith jephtha the son of prostitute now has got the name called hero of faith right his identity is now hero of faith nobody is going to remember what his father or his mother did or nobody is going to remember what happened in his past but right now god's given him a new identity and he is a hero of faith amen dear children of god no matter how bad your past has been because of you or your parents no matter how bad you messed it up the word of god says the lord can still exchange everything turn the tables around and make you a hero of faith hallelujah dear children of god in the, in the new list i truly believe when god's going to have a new list on the heroes of faith one of the names amidst david samuel jephtha gideon would be renu kumar amen hallelujah and i truly believe that your name will also be there there will be a samuel there will be a jeffrey there will be a daniel there will be a ryan those names are going to be there because the new list which god prepares is going to eradicate and delete the old list the new list will replace the old list in your life hallelujah and those are the heroes of faith so this morning dear children of god if you have been rejected you know what the worst part is the people who rejected and threw jephtha out were his own people quite often that's what pains us the most being rejected being disregarded being neglected being not acknowledged being not appreciated all right but then the call comes where the same people come and say boss could you please be my leader the lord will confirm the call upon your life nobody can deny what the lord is about to deliver don't ever think that you wasted your time and spent time on worthless stuff in your life no you're being made worthy by the lord and more importantly the lord will make sure the same people who reject you will come back and acknowledge your calling hallelujah now but when the story ends i just want to finish this jephtha does a mistake After this if you go back and read this entire chapter Jephtha goes and vows to the Lord saying Lord if you give me victory he's like if you give me victory already he needs to understand God's already turned the tables and given him victory now he says Lord if you give me victory you know what after the victory when i come home whatever comes out of the house i will offer it as a burnt sacrifice you can read the go and read the entire chapter whatever comes out of the house i will give you a burnt God did not ask for it And you know what happened this guy won and when he came or came back to his house his daughter was the first person to come out of the house and this guy just terribly started crying 
right and the word of god does not really say that he offered us a burnt offering but then the word of god says she took two months off because she was a virgin two months off the friends she came back and it was fulfilled but we don't know whether what happened really the story does not end well but then the first thing is dear children of god he cannot make such a commitment because whatever comes out of my house i will give you as a sacrifice firstly because if an unclean animal comes out of the house he cannot give a sacrifice now why i i'm 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 talking about this is today a lot of believers you know we been taught to do business with god we been taught to do business with god and there are there are so many other 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 preachers also who actually ask you to do business with god you know you tell the lord that you will do this and then he will do it for you jephtha totally misunderstood the lord had already done it for him because of the same people who rejected him now have called him to be a commander so if that had happened this victory is going to be nothing at all but then people go and do business with god god if you do me i'll do this god if you do this for me i will do this boss you don't have to in fact this jephtha idiot doesn't he know the laws also because if he is not going to offer his daughter there are some payment he can say make some payment and clear it off there were so many things in the old testament but to just go out and say whatever comes out of the house i will give it to you today dear children of god you are you are not here to do business with god he gives you he gives you free of cost because he loves you amen that's why he gave his life imagine if we jesus had to speak about you know business with us about salvation if jesus said boss i will die on the cross and i will take away your sins what are you going to do what will you give jesus after this service when i go back home whatever comes first out of my house even if it's my mother in law i will put her on the cross is this a business you're going to talk about the problem was jacob also said this lord if you do all of this i will give you a one tenth i will give you a tithe dear children of god let's not do business with god right you want to honor god honor god with everything you have lord i will honor you with all of this whether you give it or not that's what the lord expects from you shadrach meshach abednego said lord whether you deliver or not we will just worship you lord they don't talk business when you do this you will experience unbelievable miracles in your life dear children of god Jephthah was great Jephthah's calling was honored but then he went on to do business with God and this morning the Lord says I don't need anything to bless you I don't need anything to deliver you you are my son you are my daughter that's more than enough for me to promote you says the Lord